we celebrate him every day. We worship him how awesome he is. Yes. Amen. Amen. You know, all who live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Amen. The question is, will you endure? Amen. 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 It's inevitable. Offenses are going to come. They do come. Yeah. If you're not light, darkness is not going to try to penetrate you. It's when you are becoming the exception. When you're not molding to the frame and, and yielding to the way of the world that you stand out. And you become the, the squeaky wheel, so to speak. Amen. But the good thing is Christ is the oil. Amen. 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 Yes. You know, when the, when the world's complaining about what we're doing, then we must be doing something right. Amen. Amen. We're, we're, we press in, we push in. But I'm going to tell you, you have a very real adversary. A very real adversary. Say that with me. Say, I have, I have a very real, a very real adversary, adversary that does not like me. That does not like me. Amen. Now, it's important to know that because Jesus said... That the things the enemy brings at you in a day is enough for you to be concerned with. Don't worry about tomorrow. Amen. How many's ever took thought for tomorrow? We all have. We just quit it. Stop it. Amen. If you're taking thought for tomorrow, you're actually disarming yourself today. You're making yourself more vulnerable. Victory is one day at a time. You can't live tomorrow until it gets here. Amen. 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 If we can learn to get locked in to the voice of the Spirit of God and let Him assess what's going on. Yes. How many's ever had your life just driven by emotion? Yes. Emotion, whether it was fear, rage, anger, sadness, or poor me. Right? Whatever it is, it'll drive you crazy. Amen. You don't need that stuff. We need a more solid foundation to be able to get locked into, to let, let the thoughts of Christ be the thoughts that gets us locked into. Amen? Because even our own self can lie to ourself. Amen. 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 You ever deceived your own self? Right. Well, I'm going to tell you, we actually, we've all done it. We start thinking less of ourselves than we really are. We start thinking that there's not a whole lot out there or a whole lot in here that's worth a whole lot. And it's a lie. You're the most valuable thing God ever put on the face of this earth. Yes, amen. amen. That we, sure, we mess up. Yes, bad things come our way. Yes, we get assaulted, we get afflicted, we get used, we get abused. But out of it all, the Lord will deliver us and has yes, delivered us. Amen. amen. If you don't like where you're at, good. Good. Get out of it. Get out of it. Let Christ lift you up above what you're in. Yes. And at least move you something in, into something you can tolerate. Yes. Amen. Come on. But don't take it on yourself to think, woe is me. I'm hung up in this. I'm stuck in this. And, and I can't get over where I've been. I'm going to tell you, I, I speak to you right now in Jesus' name. You can not only get over where you've been, but if you're here, you're already halfway there. Amen. 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 You're already Glory. halfway there. And let's pray right now and get you the rest of the way. Yeah. Amen. Father, I agree with everyone under the sound of my voice right now. In Jesus' name, we put our behind in the path. Wait, we put our past behind us. In Jesus' name. And Lord, we thank you. We completely disarm and disassociate with all of the things of the past. Today's a new day. A new day. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Christ, we cast down every thought, every imagination, every idea, every high thing that would have ever exalted itself against who we are in Christ Jesus and who he is in us. Yes. We cast those things down, pull them down, put them into submission and command them to be subject to the truth of God that's yes. in Christ Jesus. Yes. Greater is he who's in us Amen. than the one that's in the world. Yes. Amen. And we receive your blessing, Father. Yes. We receive your refreshing and your renewing into our lives. We thank you. You renew us daily, inwardly. You renew day by day. And we accept and receive that refreshing coming from your presence, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And we give you praise for that victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, Bless you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father.
and we got to do that. We can do that. Amen. It's not just a happy thought. Amen. It's a reality. Amen. It is a truth. Yes. It is. I can't tell you the stuff I've been through. I, I could, but it bore you. <laughs> or it'd make you sick one. All the stuff that I've been through, but I'm going to tell you that I endured them by the grace of God. Yes. Amen. I've come yes. through those things. I come out on the other side. And it was a daily thing. It's a daily battle. Whatever you think you're going through right now, the battle ends today for that. Yes. Amen. It does. The, the battle ends today. Yes. In the name of the Lord Jesus Woo! Christ, your enemies are subdued. Now's the time. Now, now is the time to possess the gates of your enemies. Yes. In Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. I'm going to agree with you over that. Amen. Amen. Father, I agree with everyone in the sound of our voice right now. We thank you, Father, that you've given us authority and power thank over you, all of the power of the all enemy, the that nothing by any means shall harm us. But, Father, we do resist the devil. Yes. We resist every demon, every weapon, scheme, and device right now, Father. And we do not just drive them out, but we do drive them out. But now we take possession of the gates of our enemies. That yes. they will no longer control access into our lives. Yes. But we will control access. Yes. In yes. Jesus name right Jesus. now. We put the seal of the kingdom of God upon those <laughs> gates. And we release for the living word of God. And the holy angels of God. To keep those gates in the name of the Lord Jesus yes. Christ. That no evil, wicked, unclean or uncircumcised thing can enter through those gates again to harm us or injure us in any area, in any respect of any portion of our life. Yes. We are free from those things in Jesus' name and have possession of the gates yes. in His glorious name. Amen. 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 Praise, Praise God. Praise God. All praise. All glory. All honor to you, Father. Thank you, Father. And, and it comes down to a matter of knowing the truth and acting on it. Yes. If you know the truth, you have to act upon it. What we've done twice, just since I've been speaking, is we've acted on what we know to be true. Yes. Yes. Now that should be an everyday occurrence, an everyday thing that we practice in our life. Yes. Not that we just say, now Lord, you said. Now if, we, if we're going to bring him in remembrance, then maybe we might, just might want to act on what we're reminding him that he told us. Yeah. And Lord, if you said all of my enemies are a foot, will be made a footstool for my feet, then why aren't they? That'd be a good question. He'd probably say, and why aren't they? Because I didn't do it. <laughs> That's right. He said, I already told you they would be. Now, do you believe me or not? If you yes. believe me, you wouldn't be up here asking me right now. Exactly. So I suggest you get about my business. Amen. Yes. Amen. And put Amen. the enemy underneath your feet. Amen. 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 Well, how do I do that? Just send the word. Yes. Amen. A yes. Amen. The holy angels of God watch over the word of God to perform it. Yes. yes. And, and when the promise of God is given to you, it is the word of God. Yes. And when it comes forth out of you, it's still yes. the word of God. Yes. And since it is, the angels will watch over it when it comes out of you, just the same as it came out of the Father himself. Yes. Yes. Amen. So we expect that. Everybody say righteous expectancy. Righteous, righteous expectancy. expectancy. Righteous expectancy is when you absolutely believe and anticipate that what God said he would do is going to happen. Amen. Amen. You're not hoping for it. You're not praying for it. You already know. Yes. And when you ask believing that you have received, you shall have whatsoever you have said. Amen. 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 So it works together, but, but we have to act on that. Taking action. Righteous expectation needs to be put into action because there's unrighteous expectations. Yes. Right. If somebody says, Mark, I hate you. I'm never going to see you again. I'm never going to give you another hug. I'm never going to, you know. And Mark goes, oh, man. Now, that's an unrighteous expectation. doesn't matter what I say. What's the truth? The truth of the matter is Mark knows I do love him. Amen. And since I do, even if we had a fallen out, which we've never had one, but if we did have one, he knew I'd be over loving on him in a heartbeat. Now, I love you, right? Amen. Because we're brothers in Christ. Amen. So don't, don't let the enemy or the circumstance build an unrighteous expectation. Yes. Where you're expecting. You know why? Because with unrighteous expectation comes a whole you-know-what load of fear yes. and dread and pity me and everything else. You have to pull down 
the unrighteous expectation. There is a reason it was there. Amen? It, it, when, you, when you expect failure or you expect things to go bad, you expect the negative, you expect things to go worse, then you have unrighteous expectations. They're not godly. Amen? So what we have to do is, first of all, remove those expectations when they pop up. Yes. And you'll know when they pop up. If somebody says, ah, Bill's over at the bar again. Everybody goes, oh, man. We just drug him out of there last week. No, no. I'm joking, of course. But the unrighteous expectation would be, oh, he's fell off this, he's that, he's that. You know, those are all unrighteous things. You, you can't let your mind go down that trail that's not truth. Amen. Amen. We, we need to discipline our mind. If your mind isn't disciplined, it'll think whatever it wants to. Amen. Now you can hear things. I mean, we do. We hear everything. But God said, only hold fast to that which is good. Amen. Amen. Now, now that is a thing we need to really get locked in where we discipline ourselves to realize that it's not about what I hear, it's what I do with what I hear. Amen. Yes. Yes. If what I hear is actually filtered by the Holy Ghost of God in my life, and the things that I hear are disciplined, and my, my thinking and everything is trained to stop those things that are not of God, then it doesn't matter what I hear. Because the only things getting through this going, this permitted admission into this temple are going to be the things that has the seal of approval of God on it. Amen. 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 Now, when we hear those things, there's a process that has to take place. If you don't engage a process, then immediately you're going to find yourself being soulishly driven. Yeah. And if you're being soulishly driven, what you're going to find out is that your emotions will run rampant on you. They will begin creating all kinds of unrighteous expectations, all kinds of things that get you in a mindset to where you're not actively, confidently believing that what God said He would do, He will also perform. Amen. 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 We start thinking about all of the sad things, all the dreary things, all the, the things that are not moving in the pattern and the path that they ought to. If you don't like the way things are moving, stop them. Yes. Stop them. Amen. Stop everything you can. Now, you, you can't stop. I can't stop Rose, but I can stop anything Rose would say or do on how it impacts me. Because, yes. you see, if I'm down there, my chances of winning are less. Yes. The enemy wants to take any, any kind of a disruption in Rose and my relationship and try to drive both of us down so that we have a harder time getting up. Mm -hmm. But if I don't let it drive me down, if I let it lift me up, amen, when you're having a, a disputation with somebody, don't let it drive you down. Let it drive you up into the presence of the Father. Yes. Amen. Amen. Because when you're moving up, you're moving towards intelligence and wisdom and truth yes. and understanding. But if you, if you curve down and you hit the bottom, you know what's down there already. We, we're well familiar with what's traveling in that area there. There's no life there. There's no wisdom there. There is no answers there. Amen. There is no strength there. There's no joy there. Amen. Amen. So why go there? Don't. We don't. We don't want to go there. But guess what? We've all been there. Yes. Here's the good thing. By the grace of God, we didn't stay there. Amen. So why go there in the first place? Amen. If it's not a place you want to go, then don't go. Amen. You can't stop things from happening, but you can stop what it does to you. Amen. And by the grace of God. Jesus, I mean, just think about it. What if Jesus would have responded emotionally to everything everybody was saying and doing about him? Especially the ones he came to save. Amen? They all rejected him. He didn't say, I ain't doing it, Father. Forget it. I'm out. There ain't none of them. How many believed? Not one. He said not one believed. There were none righteous. No, not one. <clears throat> That's pretty inclusive, isn't it? Yeah. So Jesus being the righteousness of God, reestablished a new pattern of releasing righteousness to whomsoever believed. Amen. It was no longer, it, it could have never ever been instituted or given to you or imputed to you 
by keeping the law. And that's what's so hard for so many people to understand is that you could have kept every aspect of the law yet never been righteous. But in Christ Jesus who, who fulfilled the law in every part, now that life and that belief in Him is the thing that releases that life, releases that joy. Now, if, if you knew, if you were thirsty and had a diet Dr. Pepper, <clears throat> I'm not shooting a commercial for him. <laughs> and you were thirsty, take a drink. If you know Christ is in you and the kingdom of God is in you, and Romans 14, 17, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost is the kingdom of God. If you need a little joy and you know it's in you, where do you go to get it? Inside. It just gets you some, right? Problem is, we don't know where it's at. A lot of times, well, it's in there, but man, I just haven't been able to find it. Find it. Yes. Chart the course to it. Yes. Make note of it. Yes. Set it on your GPS and go there when you need peace, when you yes. need joy. Yes. Amen. Yes. Those things, when you need to, to really believe God is hearing you and in you and, and knows what's going on, that it's nothing to be freaked out about. Amen. That when you know that God knows, then good. Amen. Amen. When, when you know you have joy, get some. When you know you need and have peace, get it. When you know you need love, get it. Yes. So when, when the expectations are being rooted, they need, to be, they need to be rooted in the truth. And the truth is, anybody outside of me cannot make me joyful. Amen. They can't make me feel love. They can't make me anything. It's the one that's in here. You ever love somebody, yet they tell you the whole time that they don't feel like they're loved? You ever have kids that way? I, I've heard kids. We counsel kids. And kids will say, my mom don't love me. And talk to the mothers. I, they're weeping. I love them all my heart. Something's wrong here. Amen. We, we have this one releasing love, but the one who has to receive love has to be able to let that love come into them. And, and it's the same way with us. If you really want peace and joy, if you really want power, if you really want guidance and instruction, if you really want that love and all the other things that God offers, then you have to first believe that He gave it to you. Amen. Amen. You, you have to accept that He put it inside you, and since He did now... Based upon that truth, it's time to build or construct a righteous expectation. Amen. So that that expectation now is rooted in the things that God has said and communicated to you and not some old stupid experience that you had at the food store this morning. <laughs> or the phone call you got at 2 o'clock in the morning or anything else. It's based on the truth and the absoluteness of God. Amen. Amen. That, that's when the low places become lifted up. Amen. Yes. It's not as low. It's not, you know what I mean? You, you, that righteous expectation begins to level the playing field. Mm -hmm. It puts you in that place where God wants you to be, the things that God's communicating to you. Amen? Amen. Hey, Joe, Crystal was supposed to speak. I mean, if she's got something to say, she can come and do it. I just, um, we finished uh, praise and worship about 15, 20 minutes ago, so I just started. But in any case, the, the design of God is to make you a rock-solid individual so you're not tossed around by every wind of doctrine, every word that comes flying at you. Amen? Amen. Now, there, there's a time, we, we all go through growth spurts. <clears throat> there's things that we need to be more convinced of, but some of the things you need to be rock-solid in is that Christ is in you. Yes. Amen. Amen. Now, the second thing is, what does that mean to you? <laughs> If, if we understand what God's mission was in putting Christ in you, Amen. and we believe He did put Christ in us, then we believe that whatever mission He sent Christ on, Christ is able to do that. That's a great thing to start building an expectation. Amen. 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 
So if, if Christ working in you basically brings you everlasting righteousness, how long is that righteousness going to live? To your next mess up? How many believe everlasting is everlasting? Amen. Amen. Uh, I think that forever is forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Eternal is eternal. Yeah, I mean, it's not rocket science. It's only when you start pulling human wisdom and intellect into it that it gets crazy. If Christ is in you, you have everlasting righteousness. Amen. Much better than the energizer. Bunny righteousness. Amen. The design of God is, is for us to serve Him because we love Him. Yes. Not out of fear of impending doom and danger and gloom. It's the love of Christ that constrains us to do good things, to Amen. believe and to hope good things. God manifests His love for us while we were still His enemy. God wants you to believe in the you that He's put together. He wants you to believe in the one who strengthens you, the one that stabilizes you. The one that washes you. The one that teaches you. The one that says, don't go do that. Amen. The one that says, don't go do that. You may not have all the details, but if you hear him say, don't go do that, then maybe you should go do that, right? Amen. But it's a fun thing. Well, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Who knows? You know, I've had, I've had the Spirit keep me from going places that bad things happened where I was going to go. Or he would delay me the time I got there. It was time to pray for people. Amen. Amen. The, the intercession is an incredible thing, but but he's in you. He honors you. He he respects you. Yes. He he has confidence in you. And he wants us to have that same confidence in him. Amen. 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 That that no matter what the Father said about you, it's absolutely true. And the biggest thing we have to do is conquer our experiences. Yes. Our experiences are a teaching mechanism. Not a good one, per se, but they are a teaching mechanism. We learn from them. When you touch a hot stove, you're learning something. Right? I hope you did. If you grabbed it with the other hand, shame on you. But it's a learning mechanism. The problem is we have terrible experiences. How many believe the devil can send experiences your way? Yes. To try to teach you something he wants you to learn. Yeah. Amen. Well, when those things happen, we need to look back and say, you know what? That was not a good experience. That was not, I did not learn out of that what God wanted me to learn out of that. So I think I'm going to pull down those thoughts and imaginations tied around that circumstance and, and just cause that unrighteous expectation, the root of it, to be removed. And now you shift that over to where the righteous one can be there. Like a lot of people learn love many different ways. Some people, when they're young, uh, and, and unfortunately in, in, in my circumstance, I learned love by, unfortunately, it was an abuse thing. And it was, it was terrible. And, and those things were things that you have to overcome. Other people learn love from a good mom and dad. Or from good families, good brothers and sisters, etc. And that's all great. But the problem is, there is an expectancy that can be tied to your love. There are some people think that if they don't beat you up on a regular basis, they don't love you. There are some people think that if they don't uh, buy you all the most expensive things, they don't love you. Others think, well, if they're not out there working seven days a week, they don't love you. Love can have unrighteous expectations. It needs to be brought back in to perspective. It's something that needs to be overhauled. Well, a relationship with God can become the same way. To where people's experiences, well, even with church, can build an unrighteous expectation. Uh, things that happen in your prayer life can build an unrighteous expectation. You pray for somebody and they die. It can build an unrighteous expectation because we don't know everything that's involved in that. We've got to take that back to the Father and let Him give us an understanding. Amen? Amen. If God says lay hands on the sick and they'll recover, we should expect when we lay hands on the sick, they, recover. they will recover. Amen. So if they don't, it doesn't make God a liar. It means we need to understand what happened. Was it us? Was it them? What happened? What went, what went on? We need to get an understanding. But we have to conquer the things about unrighteous expectations Amen. because... Those are the things that keeps us from being who it is He's made us to be. Amen. It is. It keeps us putting 
stupid demands upon God or, or things where we're not expecting to believe and receive the things from God that He's already said He would give us. Yes. And in any case, those are things, and I want you to kind of keep that in your mind, about righteous expectation, unrighteous expectation, and know that the thoughts of your Father, Heavenly Father, towards you are good, not evil, to give you a hope, a future, or a destiny. Amen? Amen. That an, an expected end, which is a destiny, a place you're going to arrive at, and that your Father is in you, empowering you, encouraging you, quickening you. He's made you a life-giving spirit. He's, he's made it so none of the schemes and weapons and the devices of the enemy have to work against you. Amen. It doesn't mean they won't come against you. It just means they don't have to succeed. Amen. Amen. By the grace of God that we can meet them head on. And how do you overcome the error? It's with truth. Yes. Amen. You overcome evil with good. Yes. And, and there's none good but God. So if you do good, you've done God, right? Amen. Amen. So by the grace of God, uh, I just want to encourage you uh, to not take things to heart that come against you. Don't let it drive you out of the truth of the Spirit into the realm of the emotional. Don't let it pull you into a false reality out of a true reality. Amen. Because the truth will make you free. Yes. The false will take you captive and bring fear and dread and unrighteous expectations into your life. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you would, stand up with me. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, we bless you. We exalt you. Lord, we all have developed, unfortunately, unrighteous expectations over the years. Well, Father, we're going to lift them up to you corporately. Yes, Lord. Individually and corporately. As we bring these before you, Father, we pray that you... Make us aware of those unrighteous expectations and then help us to let go of them. Yes. Pull them down, break them, and let you, by your spirit and word, reestablish righteous yes. expectations yes. in these areas of our life. <laughs> Father, we know that we're not living the life right now that you would want us to live, so there's something that's keeping us from it. And by your grace, you will make these things known and help us to walk in the freeness of your spirit. Yes. If you would pray me, say, Father, thank you. Father, thank you. For your love and mercy and grace. For your love and mercy and grace. I love you so much. I love you so much. I receive your word to me. I receive your word to me. And I know. And I know. That I've given way. I've given to way. unrighteous expectations unrighteous. in the past. But by your grace, by your grace Lord, I release the Holy Ghost of God I the Holy to Ghost move God. throughout my life. Throughout find life. any hidden, find any hidden unrighteous, expectations find unrighteous expectations that would be in my mind, that would be in my mind, my soul, my, soul, my spirit, my or, spirit body. or body, and I give permission, and I give and permission. yield to the Holy Ghost yield to, the Holy to Holy uproot, to uproot, remove, remove cast, down, cast down, and completely eliminate, and completely eliminate every unrighteous expectation, unrighteous expectation in my life, in, my life. in Jesus' name. In Jesus. I yield to you, living word of God, I yield to, you, to speak the God, truth to speak the into truth those areas of my life. So that the righteous seed so that the righteous seed can lead me and guide me. Can lead me and that by your grace, that by your grace, in the place of the unrighteous expectation, in the place of the unrighteous expectation, there will now spring forth there will now spring a righteous one, a righteous one in Jesus' name. That will glorify my Father. That will glorify my Father. Rooted and grounded in the truth. Rooted and grounded in the truth. Causing me always to be made free. Causing me always to be made free. And walking above the lie of the enemy. And walking above the lie of the enemy. I accept and receive it. I accept and receive it. Fully and unconditionally. Fully and unconditionally. Into my life. Into my life. I thank you for it, Father. And I thank you for it. Call it done. Call it done. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Yeah. It's a great thing. It's a great thing. We, you, you are so awesome. So incredible. You just don't know. I don't know what people said to you and what they've done to you. But I'm going to tell you, if it hasn't blessed you, it wasn't right. Yes. Amen. If it hasn't blessed you, it just wasn't right. Amen. What you do, though, with what they did to you will determine your state of being. Amen. And you need to stay joyful. Stay alive. Build and walk in that righteous expectation 
Cast down those thoughts and imaginations. If somebody does bad to you, tell them what should you do. Good. Amen. Good. Bless them. Bless them. Forgive Bless them. them. If they come around here, they're going to get some forgiveness. Amen. Yeah, it looked like it. I'll give you a couple of these. I'm going to bless you. Lay hands on you fast, quick, and in a hurry or something. Oh, bless you. Bless you. Amen. I love but you but you're awesome, and don't let the enemy ever tell you anything different. Amen. Amen. Bless. Hallelujah. Praise God. Does anybody need prayer for anything else that we have? Yeah. I need prayer, yeah. just some things for me and Eddie, and several things in our life. Okay. And, um, Amen. Father, we agree right now for Denise and Eddie, we, and everything that would be going on in their life, other things that are extenuating from them, Father, just so many things. Father, you know every single thing that's going on, Father. And, and we take comfort in that, knowing that you know all things. Father, we collectively agree together as one now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we send the covering of the corporate body. We send the covering of the host of heaven in the kingdom of God to be over their lives and over their situations, Father, in Jesus' name. Everything now, we speak for it. Peace be still. In Jesus' name, we establish the peace of God and the God of peace that bruises Satan underneath his feet and brings a peace and a quietness yes. in Jesus' name. That there will be a hearing both in Eddie and in Denise and in the circumstances. They will have wisdom, guidance, and direction. And the things that are are not the things that it will be. Yes. But by the grace of the living God, in Jesus' name, we speak life, health, joy, peace, refreshing, renewing, restoration. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, to give them wisdom, guidance, direction, insight, oversight, to lead them and guide them into all truth so that they will be free from every scheme, weapon, or device of the enemy and that prosperity will continue to spring forth, Father. Those things that are still in the seed form, Father, they may not look like they have a shoot of life in them. But I'm telling you, Denise, I tell you in Jesus' name that the seed of God is true, it's sure, it's there. It will spring forth. The, the springtime is upon you and upon Eddie. And the, the shoot is coming forward in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Things are changing. The breath of God has breathed on these things. And they will change. And we give all the glory to God for it right now, based upon a righteous expectation that what God said He would do, He'll also perform it. Father, yeah. we thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 How would he? Glory. Amen. Oh, okay. Yes, sir, bro. Unspoken request. Okay. Anybody else have unspoken request? There's one there. I even have a couple, dude. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, I'm here. Gene's got six now. <laughs> Bless them all. <laughs> yeah. Amen. If, Father, we thank you, Father. You know all things, Lord. We don't have to open our mouth and even tell the enemy what we're concerned about. But Father, you know every unspoken request, everything in our heart and our mind. We lift it up to you now, Father. Every single person in this yes. place, we lift these things up to you, Father. And right now, we thank disarm you. the scheme, weapons, and devices of the well, enemy. Yes. We command the enemy to be silent and to cease and desist. Yes. In Jesus' name, not one more action against these people or their circumstance in Jesus' name. We release the host of heaven and the holy angels of God to come into every unspoken request and circumstance now and completely seize and remove the schemes, weapons, and devices of the enemy, including the enemy himself. Yes. Remove them to a place where they will be held captive until our Heavenly Father destroys them or does with them whatever he chooses to do. But they will not be involved in these unspoken requests again. In Jesus' now, we, we breathe the breath of life to come into these circumstances in Jesus' name right now to refresh and revive life in Jesus' name to begin to bring resolution, to bring righteous expression and, and righteous influence in every single one of them so that our Father's will be done. Father, we claim that victory in every single one you know what it is, Father, and I'm in agreement with those who spoke the unspoken request. And, Lord, that they do believe you're moving now. We claim that victory. Thank you for it. In Jesus' name, everybody say it. Amen. 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 Bless you. Hallelujah. And we do bless the tithe and the offering, the gift and the giver. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord open our minds more and more to the creativity of the Holy Ghost of God yes. to open up streams of income yes. into your life that yes. we don't only tithe our time and our energy, but we tithe of our finance. And by the grace of God, I speak for multiple streams of income yes. to come into your lives. Those things which you didn't even expect that the living word of God speak in you Yes. And open up other avenues for the blessings of the Lord to give you more than enough. If you have the mentality that I just need enough to get bound, I break that lie of the enemy. Yes. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we cast down those thoughts and imagination. We thank you, Lord, that, that our brothers and sisters have been given all things, including the cattle of a thousand hills. And, and all the silver and all the gold and everything else. And Father, we're in agreement with them that a righteous expectation now is set in their mind. Deuteronomy 8.28 That is our Father who gives you wealth and the power to get wealth that He may establish the covenant that He made with the forefathers. So in Jesus' name, expect wealth. Expect wealth righteous blessings to come into your life so you will have seed to sow and food in the storehouse to help others that there will be more than enough that you can lend to nations and you won't have to borrow in Jesus name now I speak that blessing and I throw off all that stupid stuff in Jesus name that's robbed you of your blessings our God is more than enough yes and your father's more than enough, and you are more than enough, and have the power to get wealth. Go get you some in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you. So be it. Praise you, Bill. I want to uh, two praise things that I want to praise the Lord about. One, for protecting my daughter and her babies. Um, they don't know what happened, but with their Escalade. All at once, the steering and the brakes both went out, and she had no control. But God protected them and kept them safe. So I want to praise Him Hallelujah. for that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. And give Him honor and glory for that. And, and the other thing was, all praise to God. God moved for Eddie at immigration, and He took care of everything, and He's continuing to, to finalize it. And I just want to praise Him. Hallelujah. Him for that. Thank you, Lord. Good. Good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's awesome. Amen. You know, I had a dream about that last night. Man. Really? You were giving testimony. Praise right. God. That's right. awesome. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Eddie and Denise are, are, are working to open the doors up to be our, our um, ministers and missionaries to Honduras. They've already got the connections. Everything's already set up. We're just working now to, to get everything together, get the paperwork, and get Eddie cleared. Yes. And thank God he's doing that. So Amen. praise God. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Amen. Awesome. Yes, sir. Uh, last weekend, uh, we've had a nephew that stayed with us for quite a while. Me and Teresa and his grandma told him about the Lord. Well, he was the last person that I thought would listen. He got saved last weekend. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. He wanted to be baptized today, but just tell him to step out and run. Right. Just tell him to step out. Hallelujah. That's awesome. You know, God's still saving and, and still healing and delivering, still leading and guiding. He's still the same God. We're just trying to get a bigger grasp on how big He is in us. Amen. Amen. And how big He wants us to be. In the world around us. Yes, amen. Because we, believe it or not, I know Jesus is the light of the world, but he said, you're the light of the world. Amen. So we are the light of the world. Now, if we're not shining, no wonder they're walking around in darkness, all right? Let your light shine. Yeah. Let them see the good things God's doing through you. Give testimony and, and let them glorify your Father. Amen. amen. For the things that he's done. All right. The Lord bless you and increase you and empower you. Give somebody a hug. Tell me you love them. And try to eat it and be blessed in Jesus' name.